Good evening, Tiffin, and welcome to another broadcast of WHEI News Center 10, live at 5. Tonight's program is brought to you by the Department of Communication and Media from inside the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. News Center 10, live at 5, is your number one campus source for bringing you the latest news around the state, around Tiffin, and around the Berg. Be sure to stay tuned in as well tonight for a social spotlight as we check the pulse of Berg students and find out what they're thinking about on the hottest topics. Coming up, Columbus, Ohio finds itself competing to host college basketball's most coveted events. And also, we will find out which important faculty member announced their retirement. We'll check up on Tiff's five trends in social media. And we'll check into our, your latest Berg Sports updates. Don't touch that remote. WHEI News Center 10 Live at 5 starts now. Good evening, Tiffin, and welcome to WHEI News Center 10, live at 5, for Wednesday, September 10, 2014. I'm Elizabeth Wren. And I'm Christine Goldsmith. Let's get to the first story of the night. Violence seemed to win over the law early yesterday when a couple was arrested for responding to a fight that was started over Facebook. According to the Akron Beacon Journal, Youngstown authorities were called to a residence just to discover Lakeisha Cotton and an unnamed woman in the middle of a physical altercation. 22-year-old Lakeisha and her husband David, age 25, broke a window to get into the woman's apartment to confront her about the post. While the couple was charged with aggravated burglary, Dana Lance, a prosecutor in Youngstown, said more and more crimes are coming from online quarreling. Columbus, Ohio finds itself competing against several different cities to host one of basketball's most coveted events, the Final Four. Although Columbus has hosted multiple rounds of the women's NCAA tournaments in the past, it pulled out all stops yesterday for a site selection committee. According to the Columbus Dispatch, the nine-member committee was treated, treated to a flash mob, a nationwide arena walkthrough, as well as many other activities advertising the entertaining hospitality from the city of Columbus. Although no decisions have been made public yet, the same committee will decide where the final four will take place from 2017 to 2020. Nonprofits may not have a chance to apply for a portion of Finley's hotel slash motel tax revenue. On Tuesday, the City Council's Operations Committee approved to a recommendation to Council that all the money from the 3% bed tax be deposited into the City's general fund instead of sharing it with local nonprofit organizations. The recommendation came as the city received funding inquiries from the Hancock Historical Museum, the Children's Museum, and the Women's Research Center, among others. This would be an opportunity for an entire community to benefit. Time Warner Cable is currently accepting applications for more than 20 full-time direct sale positions within the Finley and Tiffin, Ohio markets. The applicant should bring updated copies of their resumes and dress in business-appropriate attire. Candidates will have a chance to meet and greet the company's sales leaders, as well as get a feel for the company environment. Those wishing to proceed will then have a 10-minute speed interview. Being successful upon that, there will be a final 48-hour interview. That wraps up our local news segment for the day. But don't go anywhere because we'll have your biggest campus stories on the other side of these short messages. I'm Tori Hasenlaub. And I'm Morgan Brandt. And you're watching WHEI-TV 10. <laughs> Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. Parents sure have their hands full, and they could use an extra hand. Now, every state offers free or low-cost health insurance for your sports hero or budding artist. Kids up to age 19 can get checkups, doctor and dentist visits, hospital care, prescriptions, and more. 
Your child may qualify based on your family size and income. It's one less thing to worry about. Call or go online for more information. I'm just lying here. Don't you see me? Pick me up. Pick me up. If I'm lying here, can't you see me? Pick me up. Pick me up. Hey, we're gonna help this guy. Ricky Rubio, save a life at heartrescuenow.com. Welcome back to News Center 10, live at 5. Let's get started on our Heidelberg Campus News segment. Numerous activities are being held at Heidelberg University. Among the most exciting are the Berg Adventure Travels, or BAT Trips. These are outdoor adventures that students do with their classmates, encouraging participants to get to know each other in unique off-campus settings. Students have commented saying bat trips are great ways to get to know others and even create lasting bonds. Trip, we actually went over across to Canada and that was really neat. Um, and we got to see a lot of the, the sites that you would expect to see at Niagara as well as experience some very good regional food. We actually If you're interested in going on a bat trip, more information is available on the Heidelberg website and through the Student Engagement Office. Heidelberg School of Music is on the road to the modern era of the music industry. The Department of Music introduces a new bachelor's degree into their program. The popular music major was first proposed last year and is now offered in this year's catalog after receiving accreditation from the National Association of Schools of Music. The program has kicked into high gear as the major will officially have its first students on board this semester. This program is distinctive compared to other music degrees because of the course sequence. There is a concentration on history courses including American jazz music, music in the movies, musical theater, and popular music, which gives students a music education unavailable through other degrees. Dr. Daniel Clark of the music department has a few words pertaining to the program. The uh, degree was developed really to, uh, to supply students with uh, different opportunities in music. We kind of uh, looked at what the students wanted and we created a degree that would um, fulfill their, uh, their needs and their uh, uh, desires for education. The music department has seen tremendous progress with the program since its proposal. We hope to see it expand with the help of its students. Dr. David Weininger will be retiring at the end of the school year. According to the Heidelberg website, Weininger, who is also the Vice President of Academic Affairs, joined the Heidelberg faculty in 1985 where he was an Assistant Professor of Mathematics. Over the years, he became more involved with the administration, becoming the Vice President for Academic Affairs in 2007. Two years later, President Robert Huntington appointed him as the provost. Even though the decision is difficult, Weininger said there are other things he would like to do, and this move is a necessary step in order to accomplish those. And a tough decision because Heidelberg's got a great future. I think, I think uh, it, it's really poised to do some really amazing things, and I, it, it would have been fun to be part of that as the provost, but... Uh, but they decided that uh, it was the right time. And Weininger stated that he plans to do some part-time work and that he will still be at various events on campus because Heidelberg has been a large part of his life for the past 30 years. We will certainly miss Dr. Weininger's friendly face on campus come next year. That's really sad to see uh, Dr. Weininger go, but I'm sure Heidelberg will find someone who is just as great to take his spot. 
Hopefully so. And it's nice to see that the music program is expanding. Yeah, hopefully that can draw in some new students who might not have thought of us before. Yeah. And that's all we have for Berg's Campus News today. We'll get into the latest news and stories from the social media world next. News Center 10, live at 5. We'll be right back. What's up? I'm Bella. Yo, what up? This is Vinny Guadagnino. I'm Nick Cannon. Hi, I'm Aziz Ansari. That was your line. You can help by joining DoSomething.org. DoSomething.org. That's why I'm teaming up with DoSomething.org. <laughs> cereal for breakfast, out of hand for lunch, and as an after-school snack. And good health starts with good nutrition. What better way than with all-natural California raisins? They're fat and cholesterol-free, low in sodium, with no added sugar. Hello, and welcome to our Social Spotlight segment. Let's check out what's trending today in the world of social media. Ray Rice has finally made some noise after a leaked video of the NFL athlete knocking his wife unconscious surfaced a few days ago. In addition to massive media coverage strongly led by TMZ and waves of public opinion from social media, Rice received a terminated contract from the Baltimore Ravens and indefinite suspension by the National Football League. Rice had hunkered down in silence from the heated issue until yesterday when he texted CNN's Rachel Nichols. Nichols subsequently tweeted this alleged quote from Rice, I'm just holding strong for my wife and kid, that's all I can do. Despite the video of the altercation which took place in an elevator, Rice said he and his wife wish they could take back those brief moments, that they have come out better friends and parents from the whole ordeal. On Wednesdays, we like to catch up with students and faculty on campus and have a bit of fun with them in the segment we like to call Social Time with Scotty C. Let's see what WATI reporter Scott Carpenter has for us today. I'm Scott Carpenter, and you're in Campus Social Time with Scotty C. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Social Spotlight with Scotty C. I'm Scott Carpenter welcoming you into a full year of going around campus and asking lighthearted questions in your entertainment every Wednesday. This week, the question is, how are you doing back at Heidelberg and what does Heidelberg mean to you? I'm here with baseball player John Watkins. And John, how are you doing? I'm doing good, and you? I'm doing great, man. Back at Heidelberg. And speaking of that, what does back at Heidelberg mean to you? Um, pretty much, I'm from Michigan, so I like to get out the state and, you know, see new people and it's good to be back seeing my friends stuff like that does that make you a blue fan if you're from michigan definitely oh boy anyway um so what is what opportunities do you find at heidelberg that you don't get possibly anywhere else well since it's a small school you get to see a lot of the same people like instead of going to a big school you don't see as many people as you do there so I think right. that's an advantage gotcha john all right and one last thing oh um I.O. 
Oh, we got him. <laughs> he did it. All right, I'm here with freshmen Gabby and Taylor. And Gabby, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. And Taylor, how are you doing? Great. Awesome. All right, well, Gabby, it's your first year. So what are you, what is exciting about Heidelberg so far? Um, everything. Like, classes are great. Campus is beautiful. Food's not too bad yet. Yeah, yeah. okay. Good. Hornerman's enjoyable. So, and uh, Taylor, what do you see at your future at Heidelberg in these next four years? Um, here at Heidelberg, I see a chance to take many different opportunities, try new things, um, become a part of different clubs, and just enjoy and meet new people. Awesome. Well, it was good chatting up with you guys. You guys have a good first year. All right, here with Heidelberg football player R.A. and a campus favorite, Ryan Fink. Fink, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you, man? I'm doing good, man. Hanging in there. And everybody's back at Heidelberg, and it's an exciting time. And what does being back at Heidelberg mean to you? Oh, it means everything. I, I, I call this place home for a reason. I'm, I love being up here. It's great to be back up here with everybody and playing football again. Yeah, and football season looking good? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're 1-0 so far. Quite the smackdown on Alma. <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. it? You, was, we were looking for the mercy rule. It never applied. But And then what do you? what is the most exciting part looking forward to this year at Heidelberg? Just, I don't know. I mean, I, I would have to say football, but it's biased opinion because it's <laughs> me because I play football. But, you know, there's a lot to be excited about. There's new professors, new people on campus, you know. It's really, you can be excited about anything up here. Absolutely. Get to know him. He's a campus favorite. That's Ryan Fink. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another social segment with Scotty C. It was good catching up with you guys again. And I got to say, a lot of people excited to be back at the Berg, including myself. And I'm most excited for golf, meeting some new people, as well as, of course, the Scotty C. Social Spotlight. So until next Wednesday, I'll catch up with you later at Heidelberg. That's all we have for our Social Spotlight segment tonight. Let's send it back over to Elizabeth and Christine at the news desk. Thanks, Allie. So are you excited to be back to the campus? I'm really excited to be back at campus. I love seeing all my friends and being just a short walk away from them. I live kind of far away, so not many of my friends live down in my area, so I don't get to see anybody over the summer. I just work all summer, so not much social time. It's time to throw it over to Dave to take a look at today's top sports stories. The women's volleyball team is off to a fantastic 5-3 start this season with a victory over non-conference opponent Defiance last night in a three-set sweep. The girls, however, have not yet been tested in an OAC contest this season. They will do so at home against a tough opponent, Audubon University, on September 16th. High expectations are set for this season after finishing with an overall record of 18-15 and, and tied for the first in the OAC last season. Sophomore setter Carly DeRuza says the girls are always competing for that OAC championship and ultimately make a run in the NCAA tournament. Well, as always, we try to compete for the OAC championship. So we want to do that, and then other than that, we want to make it to the NCAA tournament. Senior running back Cattell Brooks was named to the D3Football.com Team of the Week for his performance in a season-opening route of Alma College. This marks Brooks' fourth time being named to this list, receiving this recognition in Week 4 of 2012 and Week 7 and 11 of 2013, the latter of which being made when he broke in the NCAA All-Divisions record for rushing yards, a game backing 465 rushing yards against Baldwin-Wallace. Brooks did not miss a beat entering the 2014 season, scoring on just his third carry of a ball game, as he took the handoff and made a few moves before getting to the outside outrunning the Alma secondary en route to an 88-yard touchdown. Later on from 10 yards out, he found a hole in the middle that was paved by the offense line for another touchdown. Brooks capped off his day midway through the second quarter with a 77-yard score. He finished the day with 192 yards on just nine carries and three touchdowns. Cartel and the rest of the Student Prince football team will have a bye week before taking the road for their first OAC contest of the season at John Carroll. The matchup of nationally ranked teams is scheduled to kick off at 1.30 p.m. That's all we have today in the world of sports. Now let's take it back to Christine and Elizabeth at the news desk. Thanks, Dave. So 
So you excited about the football season going? I'm so excited about football. Football is my favorite sport to watch and see its games. I love the atmosphere, so I am super excited. I'm excited that we got off to a good start and hopefully the momentum keeps going. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> when we return, a brain-to-brain -brain transmission is sent a distance of 5,000 miles. Hi, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Brianna. And you're watching WHEI TV 10. Have fun! Woo! Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. Hey, what's up? I'm Bella. Yo, what up? This is Vinny Guadagnino. I'm Nick Ken. Hi, I'm Aziz Ansari. That was your line. You can help by joining DoSomething.org. DoSomething.org. That's why I'm teaming up with DoSomething.org. <laughs> Support for young people to have a mentor. A mentor could be a regular, everyday person. It's just somebody there to help the child. Knowing the type of influence in Chad makes it so great. By having a mentor, he has someone to bounce ideas off of. He has someone to also challenge him and help him see a vision for the future. What you'll get out of it is just the satisfaction of knowing that you've helped somebody. Mentoring works. Become a mentor. and I just love California raisins. At our house, we eat California raisins on our cereal for breakfast, out of hand for lunch, and as an after-school snack. And good health starts with good nutrition. What better way than with all-natural California raisins? They're fat and cholesterol-free, low in sodium, with no added sugar. I'm Coach Hartzell, you're watching WHEI TV 10. Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. Welcome back to WHEI News Center 10, live at 5. Let's get to the last story of the night. A team managed to send a brain to brain transmission of information between humans from India to France, a distance of 5,000 miles without performing invasive surgery on the test subjects. There were four participants in the study. One was assigned to a brain-computer interface who transferred the thought, while the three others were assigned to retrieve the thought. A technique known as electroencephalogram, which monitors brain signals from the outside, was used to send the m and record the thoughts as outgoing messages and send them via the Internet. The other three participants were successfully able to retrieve the messages through their own brain-computer interfaces, essentially allowing thoughts to travel like text messages or emails to other people across the world. So, we're not 5,000 miles apart, but what am I thinking? That you want dinner. I mean, I do want dinner, <laughs> but I was actually thinking that I want an apple with my oh, dinner. I so, see. you were half up there. I was close. Thank you for watching WHEI News Center 10 live at 5. Our program tonight was produced and presented by the Department of Media and Communications from inside the Media Communications Center here at Heidelberg University. Thanks for tuning in to today's broadcast. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for our next broadcast. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Christine. And for Allie, Dave, and all the WHEI production crew, we thank you for watching.